Disclaimer. This video is exploring queer baiting in Supernatural through analyzing the relationship between Dean Winchester and Castiel. If you're not a fan of this popular pairing or have an issue with the term queer baiting, this video is not for you. But if you are curious to learn how and why it all started, you are absolutely in the right place. Have you ever wondered if a TV show can be extremely gay and homophobic at the same time? Because if you did, I would ask you to join me in my suffering and watch Supernatural. But how can a show be both gay and homophobic? Isn't that like an oxymoron? Yes it is, but allow me to introduce you to the not-so-wonderful world of queerbaiting. Queerbaiting is and it's just a marketing technique for fiction and entertainment in which creators hint at but then do not actually depict same-sex romance or other LGBTQ representation. Supernatural creators are notorious for doing exactly that, although not intentionally at first. What do I mean by not intentionally? At first, Supernatural was a story about two brothers who travel the United States in their 67 Chevy Impala and kill supernatural creatures. It was a testosterone-filled modern western, filled to brim with urban legends and spooky stories. The focal point of Supernatural was never romance, nor development of any deeper romantic relationships, and even though Sam and Dean did have occasional relationships with women, they were never fleshed out in a way that would engage the audiences or make them root for this relationship, and it was never relevant to the overall story arc. Sam's and Dean's love interests were pretty expendable in the show, the same show that had a nasty habit of killing off any women that would come between the brothers. But that all changed at the beginning of Season 4, the beginning of Destiel. Destiel was an accidental child of Eric Kripke that only happened because of the writer's strike back in 2007. The Writers Guild of America strike was a labor conflict that affected many American TV shows, including Supernatural. Supernatural was on its third season when the writer's strike happened, and its usual 22-episode season had to be shortened to only 16 episodes. This caused major problems to the writers since they had already planned out how the third season would end. It was never intended for Dean to sacrifice himself and go to hell in the season's finale, but the writers had to give up on a story arc where Sam would be the one to save Dean from hell because of time limitations. By yeeting Dean to hell in the finale, Kripke and the rest of the crew bought a bit more time to develop the storyline for the next season. Due to the writer's strike and the fact that the third season was weirdly paced, it met pretty mixed reviews from both the fans and the critics. Kripke at this point knew that he had to step up and go all in and create an epic storyline that would hook the audiences both old and new. And that's where Castiel comes into the picture. In the first episode of Season 4, aptly named Lazarus Rising, Dean is resurrected after being in hell for over four months. Confused and disoriented, Dean manages to reunite with Bobby and Sam, not knowing who saved him from hell and why. At the very end of the episode, Dean and Bobby, willing to summon this mysterious creature, come face to face with Castiel, the angel of the Lord, the angel who gripped Dean tight and raised him from perdition. And so, Destiel was born. The premiere of Season 4 put the fandom in frenzy. See, before Castiel appeared, the show had a severe lack of secondary characters who would be seen as love interests to the brothers, while the existing female love interests in the show were often despised by the growing female audience that, due to internalized misogyny, didn't want the brothers to have any relationships with women at all. Hence, the most popular ship in the fandom prior to Season 4 was Wincest. Yup, you heard that right. Some fans were so against Sam and Dean forming any relationships outside their family, especially romantic relationships, that they just started shipping them together. When Castiel appeared, all of a sudden, that fandom dynamic started to change, in favor of Destiel. After Season 4 premiered, hundreds of Destiel fanfics were immediately made on popular fanfiction websites. Most fans were totally on board with the idea that maybe Castiel is exactly the kind of secondary character that they were craving all along. All this contributed to the way that Dean's and Castiel's relationship would be developed over the course of next 12 seasons. Even though Supernatural fandom likes to joke that queer baiting in this show was done intentionally by the showrunners from the get-go, we do need to cut Kripke and his team some slack. At least for now. 
What I strongly believe happened is that Kripke and his team haven't anticipated that Castiel's character would soon become a fan favorite, and that his relationship with Dean would soon become something that the show is known for, and that it would introduce a completely new audience to the show, the audience who didn't even belong to their target demographic at first at all, women and LGBTQ community. Castiel was never supposed to be in the show longer than a couple of episodes, and another angel, Anna, was supposed to have his storyline and also act as a love interest to Dean. But after overwhelmingly positive fan response to Castiel, something that they almost never had in the previous seasons when they would introduce a new character, Kripke knew that he had to keep Misha Collins in the supporting cast. So Castiel got Anna's story, and she was soon killed off for convenience. After the initial boom that Castiel made in the fandom and in the show's ratings, what I think happened is that Kripke and all the other showrunners that came after him decided to capitalize on that deep connection that Dean and Castiel already developed in season 4 and to use intentional ambiguity of their relationship as a driving force behind the show. There was a clear distinction in the approach towards Dean's and Castiel's relationship in season 4 and season 5 which were directed by Eric Kripke and the later seasons which were directed by various other showrunners. While there were a lot of suggestive moments and subtext throughout both seasons, most notably in moments like this... My superiors have begun to question my sympathies. Your sympathies? I was getting too close to the humans in my charge. You. And this... Let me tell you something, there are two things that I know for certain. One, Bert and Ernie are gay. Two, you are not gonna die a virgin. Out on my watch. These moments were played more as a joke, as a way to test the waters and see whether the new target audience will pick up the hints. And it's safe to say that the new target audience absolutely took the bait. But why was this bait so effective in the first place, and how was it used as a leverage to make Supernatural one of the most popular TV shows in the last 15 years? Not so long ago, TV shows were pretty reluctant to portray same-gender relationships with respect and nuance that they deserve. Most non-heterosexual relationships were either ignored or weren't given the development that their straight counterparts would get. Since the 90s, there were many portrayals of gay relationships on screen, but most of them were portrayed in a stereotypical and reductive way. The shift in LGBTQ representation happened only in the last decade, and we started getting more relationships on screen that felt real, and not like simplified caricatures. The shift also happened in discourse towards same-gender relationships. Younger audiences were applauding the change and demanded more good representation in the media. People were starved for representation in TV shows and movies. Starved for non-stereotypical characters that they could connect to. Characters that would have a well-developed and rounded relationship that didn't feel forced or out of character. And as the shift in public started to happen, Supernatural showrunners definitely picked up on that scent. At this point, we all know that Dustiel would never happen on screen for multiple reasons. Showrunners were not intending to go in a direction where they would need to explain the nature of Dean's and Castiel's relationship to the audience. They were also afraid that this would alienate the more conservative part of the audience who wouldn't accept that Dean Winchester could be seen as anything but a macho womanizer. And there was also a disagreement between some cast members and people involved in the show, who didn't see this relationship as anything but platonic. Most notably, Jensen Ackles, the actor who played Dean, who for the most part thought that the idea of Destiel was preposterous. Destiel was never gonna happen. But what if, just what if, there were hints and clear visual cues that Dean and Castiel not only share a more profound bond as buddies, but also their interactions were deliberately ambiguous and coded in a romantic way. This way the showrunners could have their cake and eat it too. They could throw as many gay references as they please. They could develop Dean's and Castiel's relationship in a way that would put any straight relationship on TV to shame without ever addressing it or allowing the characters to actually have that relationship. 
That is queer baiting 101, a technique that has been overused on TV for many decades, but Supernatural absolutely knocked it out of the park. As the show progressed, it was evident that queer baiting had just begun. Even though they tried to get rid of Castiel on multiple occasions, most notably in Season 7, Episode 2, when he died after his vessel exploded from holding millions of souls from Purgatory and subsequently releasing Leviathans into the world, Castiel was always brought back to the show by popular demand. Showrunners had this habit in the later seasons where they would intensify interactions between Dean and Castiel so much, heightening the tension between them that couldn't be interpreted as just platonic, and then separating Castiel from Dean for multiple episodes, even almost a whole season, because they just didn't know where to go with their story. The natural progression of their relationship from acquaintances to allies friends, found family, and even possible romantic interests was constantly disrupted by the showrunners, by them being either drawn together so closely that it was clear that there is something lingering in the air between the two, or separating them without any reason for an extended time period where that tension could settle down a bit and not overshadow everything else that was happening in the show. Different showrunners, of course, had different approach towards the nature of Destiel and the way that this relationship was handled. In the Kripke era, Destiel was only getting traction, it was starting to become increasingly popular online, and of course Eric Kripke and his crew took notes and started hinting at possible romantic subtext between the two. The ambiguous nature of Dean's and Castiel's relationship was referenced throughout Season 4 and Season 5 by other characters, and Castiel's affection for Dean was made clear from the get-go, causing him to rebel against his family for basically one person that he cares about. Even though early Destiel interactions were played more as a joke, usually setting up Castiel as the one who is in love with Dean, not vice versa, in Kripke's era, we did see glimpses of Dean's gay panic, or should I say bi panic, whenever he would have a close interaction with Castiel. Sarah Gamble's era had a different approach, and even though there were major inconsistencies in portrayal of Dean's and Castiel's relationship in her two season run, season six is when queer baiting started to be in full force. What was only accidental subtext in the previous two seasons that could be explained by great chemistry between the two actors, in season six and seven, we started to get more and more moments like this. You're distracted, and that makes me nervous. I am holding up my end. Ah, oh, yes. But is that all you're holding, huh? The stench of that impala's all over your overcoat, Angel. Eh, where other characters referenced their dynamic as romantic. Even though these interactions were also at first portrayed as jokes, at the end of season 6 and throughout season 7, where they tried to distance Dean and Castiel by essentially killing Castiel off and losing a major part of their fanbase in the process, their relationship was starting to be written as intentionally romantic. Destiel did not feel one-sided anymore. Castiel wasn't the only one who cared about Dean, but Dean also started to express that he cared deeply for Castiel as well. Gamble's era did something that would become common throughout the rest of the show. It hyped up Destiel, giving into the fan service, and then when things got too heated, it tried to kill the ship completely. When Jeremy Carver took over the show, the queer baiting was already in full swing and he had no intention of stopping it. Instead, he leaned into exploring the dynamic between Dean and Castiel even further. Dean's feelings towards Castiel were explored even more, and it became clear as day that the unrequited love that Castiel felt throughout the show so far is being reciprocated, in a way. The whole Purgatory storyline was filled to brim with Destiel moments that could not be interpreted as anything but gay. It was that clear that the subtext that they were playing into was fully becoming text at this point. And the showrunners weren't the only ones who did the intentional queer baiting. In the beginning of the video, I mentioned how some cast members had a huge role when it comes to hyping up Destiel. The biggest perpetrator of this crime is Misha Collins, who played Castiel and who was at that point the absolute fan favorite of the whole cast, and who also had a huge social media following that was often used to confirm that Destiel was indeed a romantic pairing. 
As I mentioned previously, when things got too heated between the two, showrunners naturally decided to tone down the gay. And they also started to intentionally gaslight the audiences by telling them that despite overwhelming amount of evidence that they have been queer baiting their fans for quite a while now, fans were the ones that are in the wrong and that they were just imagining things. This didn't sit well with the fandom, and the show started getting a lot of backlash for hinting at a possible gay romance without having any intention of actually portraying it. Andrew Dabbs era had some interesting twists and turns. Queer baiting could not be ignored anymore, and everybody and their mother knew that Supernatural was notorious for it. Despite the changing discourse, Supernatural didn't make an effort to do anything to deny it. Instead, it did what Supernatural does best, sweep it under the rug and pretend like it's not happening. During Dab's era, there were some people behind the scenes who did make a serious effort to portray Destiel more canonically, but they were often overshadowed by the rest of the crew who still weren't on board with Destiel, but didn't stray for a second from continuing the never-ending insinuations and romantic coding of the two characters. Destiel was given a lot of screen time in the last four seasons, where their relationship was portrayed as more mature and had a natural progression. As the final season was nearing its end, the emphasis on Dean's and Castiel's relationship was even more pronounced, giving way to hope that maybe, just maybe, the 12 years of constant queer baiting will pay off in the end. Of course, all hope was lost, when in just three final episodes we got an explicit love confession from Castiel to Dean, then Castiel's immediate death, and complete erasure from the final two episodes. So, at the very end of the video, we need to ask ourselves, whose fault is it that queer baiting happened in Supernatural and what was the reasoning behind it? And the answer is complicated, as everything else in Supernatural. I strongly believe that multiple parties are responsible for the rise of queer baiting in this show and its prevalence throughout the majority of the seasons. Of course, the showrunners are definitely the most at fault, because even though queer baiting and Destiel started out as an unintentional inside joke, it soon became the focal point of the show, and the writers absolutely knew at some point that Destiel was what brought in the new audiences and got them hooked on the show, and more viewers meant more money that the show would make. At the same time, supporting cast, most notably Misha Collins, had a very big role in hyping up the fandom and even giving them a sense of false hope that one day Destiel might be fully canon. And last but not least, the fandom also had a role, although a much smaller one in creating this monster that Destiel is today. People have always loved shipping characters, specifically shipping characters in slash fiction, the most prevalent genre on any fanfiction website. When a highly unrepresented and marginalized group starts being vocal about the lack of representation, and then picks up the signals that were already in the narrative, this gives the show creators a green light to continue exploiting naivety of that group which genuinely believed that they were being represented. And that is how we got the greatest love story broadcasted on TV in the last 15 years that was never supposed to happen. Thanks for watching this video till the very end. If you like this analysis, consider giving it a like and subscribe to my channel for more similar content. I wish everybody a pleasant rest of the day and until next time, bye bye.